And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Massive Darkness 2 Hellscape. Now, Massive Darkness is a dungeon crawl. The original was a dungeon crawl from Simon Games, and while I watched it being played, I never really got into the game. I never played it. Um, so, I know that's going to bug a few people because in this review, I'm not going to be able to efficiently compare the two. I'll tell you this, from the people I've talked to who played Massive Darkness, this is a vast, huge change, this one from the original one. So whether you played the original one or not, this is a dungeon crawl style game that does not have a campaign in it. There is a separate campaign box that you can buy. I've not played with that. I've simply played with this and the stretch goals. There's lots of extra things that you can add into it and I'll be taking a look at those stretch goals um, in another video. Uh, but this is this review is just talking about this base game. In this base game, you and up to five other people, you can play this solo and up to five other people, will pick one of six different classes in this game. Each class plays wildly differently. You go through a scenario, monsters will pop up, you fight those monsters, you can level up to level five as you go through the scenario and get different special skills. Here's a bit more about how the game plays. At the beginning of the game, each player is going to get a hero board with their hero. And in a base game, we ha you can be a rogue, you can be a ranger, you can be the shaman, you can be the paladin, you can be a wizard, or you can be a berserker. Players are going to start with no experience and they're going to start at level 1. There's a little card you put in here where you can go up to level 5 over the course of the game. You'll start with some battered leather armor. You get to pick a potion, a mana or a health potion, which you'll put next to your board, and then you get a weapon, and so you can go through the different weapons. So uh, I'll give him a cruel axe. So this weapon shows that it is a melee weapon. There are three kinds of weapons, melee, magic, and ranged. It shows that it takes both hands, so I put in this slot, but you, it's many weapons take only one hand, then you can have two weapons or a weapon and a shield, and then there's spots to put other things you get as the game goes by. But that's not all you'll get. You will get specialized pieces based on your class. So this is the Berserker. He's going to get this Berserker board here. And you're going to get a whole pile of skill cards. And since you start at level 1, you'll pick one of those level 1 skill cards. So for example, I'll take Fatal Fury 1. And that, on, on the Berserker here, will go underneath his Blood Rage. And I'll talk a little bit about the characters in a bit. And then you're going to take your character and pick a scenario. So each scenario is basically an entire game. You can play through a quest. There's a tutorial quest and highway to hellscape and the passage and each of them shows you what to set up so you'll find the boards that you need and you're gonna place these boards and place out a bunch of tokens on the boards following this. It will show you where the players start in the course of a game. It will give you any special rules that that game has and then you start. Over the course of a game, there are four, uh, through each round, there is the heroes phase, there is the monster phase, there is a leveling up phase, and then there is a darkness phase. And players will keep going through these until the scenario ends, either with all the heroes being defeated too many times. Every time a hero is defeated, they're going to be removed from the board, but they get to come back. You just have to spend a Lightbringer token, and players will have a certain number of Lightbringer tokens, and when all your Lightbringer tokens are gone and someone dies, at that point you lose. You win when you meet the requirements of the quest, whatever they might be. Now, I'm not going to go over everything in this game, but let me give you some quick ideas of how it works. On a hero's turn, they're going to have three actions things that you can do. You can move. When you move, normally you get two movement points, although things can change that. So you can move two zones here. You can open a door, although when you open a door to a room, you're going to draw a door card. Door cards can have a variety of things happen. Here it gives the active hero three experience, but then all the treasures in there get discarded. Here you got a bear trap. 
that might cause some danger. Here the monsters just go away. There's no monsters in this one. Here you're spawning monsters on portals. So all sorts of things might happen from these cards. As far as I can tell, they're all unique. But otherwise, there is a monster in here. And whenever you open a door that has a monster token, you're going to draw a monster. So there are different monster cards, mob cards here, and you're gonna draw one of these based on the level of your highest hero. So these are both skeletons, for example. And when this happens, you can see that their stats can be different. They have a different number of hit points. They have a different number of treasures that are going to be on them, and they have different number of defensive dice and a special ability. Then when you spawn the monster, there's always a mob leader as well as a, another mob, another monster in that group for each hero that you're playing. So if I'm playing with three heroes, and so now that we have a, a group of four, one of them being the leader. And the way this game works is as you do damage to these monsters, so let's say we're playing as a level 3 a group of skeletons here, uh, you're going to do damage to them, and it's basically done to the group as a whole. So if I do 3 damage, I kill 1. If I do 6 damage, I kill 2. If I do 9 damage, I kill 3. And when you do 12 damage, you kill the leader. And whenever you kill the leader, you're going to get the treasure that they come with, but also when you draw a mob group, you're going to draw an item. So this item shows how that mob attacks. So this mob, for this particular skeletons, they're going to roll an orange die and it's melee combat. If you defeat the leader, the last one there, you're also gonna get it. It's a tainted sword now, which you can use, which will give you an orange die when you attack, and when you attack, the defender will lose one shield. So let's talk a little bit about combat. There are three different kinds of combat. For melee, you need to be in the same spot as the people you're fighting. For magic, same spot, or one adjacent with line of sight. For ranged, you have to be one or more away in line of sight. Also, whether you are in a darkness, you can see four of the spots on this board are darkness, five are light, is going to matter in this game. So every board has a different combination of darkness spots and light spots. So whenever you fight monsters, you're going to roll dice for your weapon that you're using to attack. So maybe it's one orange, or maybe it's an orange and a yellow, whatever it might be. You're going to be rolling those, but you're also going to be rolling a black die here, a monster die, for each monster that's in the combat. So let's say there's four of them. You're going to roll four monsters. They can hit you back even when you're attacking them. If you're in darkness, you get to roll this amazing darkness die, and then you roll defensive dice. So if you're fighting monsters, let's say we're fighting skeletons, they'll have two of these. If, this is, if the monsters are attacking you, you would roll, you know, you're picking their attack dice against your defensive dice. But let's say I'm attacking these skeletons here, so I'm gonna roll these dice. Now it's possible that you will have free re-rolls or re-rolls that you can pay for. Each um, character is gonna have a certain number of hit points and mana points, and you can use mana to activate special abilities. I can't get into every special ability. There's, there's probably a hundred different things and uh, weapons and things. But you're gonna look, these claws will activate the monster's special ability. So for example, here on the skeletons, it says if you roll two of those claws, we're gonna add another skeleton to the group. Ah! The monsters also have these claw marks on these, which are unblockable hits that hit the hero. Other than that though, you're gonna be comparing the swords that you roll to the shield. So here there's two swords, two shields, nothing's gonna happen. But if I had rolled, for example, four swords, two shields, I'm gonna do two damage to the enemy. And also this, this darkness die can add up to three swords on it. Some let you get mana back, you'll get to rejuvenate a lot of mana. And then the darkness die has this darkness ability which activates the ability on your character. So for example, the shaman, use any attack spell in the amulet for free. Every hero in a consecrated zone performs a free recover after this combat. May increase any element to max. Draw and discard an arrow card, do its effect. And you're like, I don't know what any of that means. They're awesome, okay? They're all amazing things to do. And that's when you roll the darkness. And this die only rolls when you're in the darkness. And so that's how combat's gonna work. You can fight as one of your actions. You can move as one of your actions. You can trade with other heroes as an action. You can recover two health or two mana as an action. And then the monsters will all get two activations in which they will move and attack you and or they will um, just move towards enemies. They're gonna get different 
two activations, so they could attack you twice, they could move twice, they could move and attack. But then there's the amazing leveling up. At the end of a round, if you have enough experience, so you need five experience, and you get one experience every time you kill a monster, you everyone gets two experience when the leader is killed, and if you kill a roaming monster, which we'll talk about in a bit, you get three experience, everybody. So you're going to get experience. You'll spend that experience. So you spend five experience to go up a level. That's going to increase some things. So this might, this will increase your hit points. It also throws another treasure token in the bag and lets you pick another skill. So I could pick another level one skill or I might pick another level two skill now if I want to. The last thing in a round is the darkness track and you're going to be moving a token down this. And then when it gets to the end, you just move it over here and you keep moving it through here. Uh, as you move this token on the track, sometimes it will add tokens to the treasure bag. Sometimes it will spawn monsters at the portals that are on the map. And sometimes it brings out a wandering monster. Now, a wandering monster is a one big giant monster. You'll draw from a wandering monster deck and you'll get some huge monster. So here's some examples of these big monsters that are going to come out. They will follow very specific patterns when they're activated. They have certain dice that they roll on attack and defense. Their miniatures are much bigger than the other monsters. And they have also more treasure that they're going to get. So, and these, I'm showing you the level one and two wandering monsters. When one of these is killed, everyone's going to get three experience. I mentioned the treasure bag, and at the beginning of the game, you're going to seed it with some common and a few rare tokens. And as players level up, they'll throw more rare, and they'll throw these uh, epic tokens in the bag. And when you draw monsters, the leader gets a token, the wandering monsters get tokens, tokens come out in rooms. And when you get these tokens or defeat monsters, you're going to draw cards from these different decks. And there are common treasures, rare treasures, and epic treasures. And these can be all sorts of things. A potion here that I can spend to give me three blue dice in defense. A helm that gives me an automatic shield in defense. This gives me a free reroll, this helmet. This lets me heal five, a one-time use potion. This in combat, I can spend one mana to reroll two dice. Here this adds three mana. Here when I attack, I can spend a mana to reroll a die. And we're taking a look at common treasures. Let's take a look at some of the rare stuff. A thief's scarf. If I'm in the shadow, I get to reroll two dice on an attack. This gives me two defensive dice, and I get plus two mana whenever I defend. That just gives me three defensive dice. This gleaming helm. If I'm in the light when I attack, I can spend two and after combat heal equal to the wounds that I've dealt. You also notice this is part of a Shadow Bane set. This is an even more crazy thing that if you get two pieces of Shadow Bane equipment, then you will find the Shadow Bane card for your character and you get a special ability that you have here. And then if you get four pieces, you get an even better special ability. The epic treasures here. This is one die in a defense, but I can discard this mana instead of health when I'm attacked. This, the first time any hero equips this item, they get a new skill of their level or lower. This only works for the rogue, but if they're in the light, rogue tokens give them extra rerolls. There's all sorts of cool things here. And here you add three fire to an enemy. There's fire causes extra damage to them. There's different tokens you can have. So you're going to get a lot of treasure. There's even place in the map where you can turn three commons and draw a rare or three rares and draw an epic. So there's lots of looting in this game. So real quick, before we go to final thoughts, I just want to give you a quick rundown of the six basic classes you can play in this game. First, you have the Berserker. The Berserker has three stances, and they're going to have a token that they'll shift back and forth between these stances, and they're going to put upgrades on these stances. And every time they take hits, instead of getting rid of the tokens, they put them here, and it's just rage. And you can spend rage to change your stance and do different things. So like, for example, this would be under the provoke spot here, and it says I can spend a rage, and after combat, if you took at least one wound, deal two wounds. That's a skill the Berserker has. So the Berserker, the more they get hit, and they have a lot of health usually, they're going to spend this rage to just beat up on the enemies. The Mage gets this spell wheel here that has some basic spells on it, and you can cast these spells for a certain amount of mana, in which case the wheel rotates. You can also spend mana to rotate it more clockwise, but as time goes by, you're going to add spells 
really awesome spells is Dark Magic 3. You'll add these spells to different spots. When you get there, you can activate them. So the more spells you have, and you'll be able to spin this wheel and do different combos. The Ranger just gets this little deck of arrow cards. Now these arrow cards um, have one to four arrows at the top of each one. And so whenever you make an attack, a ranged attack, you're gonna turn over these cards. And you can turn over as many as you want, but you'll notice I'm counting the arrows up here. I don't wanna go over seven. So here I got six. I, I probably should stop here. If, let's say I draw one more, ooh, I got exactly seven, because exactly seven's the best. If you get less than seven, you'll get all the bonuses in the middle here. I ignore one wound. I can spend a mana to get rid of two shields, a mana to reroll two dice. This just gives me a mana. If you go over seven, all these red negative things will happen to you. But if you get exactly seven, you get the things at the top. Ignore all the wounds. Minus two shields. Reroll two dice for free and two mana. And now once you use these arrows, you set them aside and you'll keep drawing. So you keep track of the numbers that you have in your deck. So it's a little bit of a push your luck character. The Paladin can use these tokens and place them out on a board in different areas to bless those areas, which will give bonuses to them. And so as the Paladin gets, you can put cards underneath these to upgrade them and then flip them over. You can bless one of them to make it even better or flip over at the end of a turn. But this is, they're one of the best support characters because they're gonna be able to give bonuses and buffs to the other characters. The Shaman has this little board here where they have elemental tokens and they'll be moving these up. Whenever you get magic, you can move up one of these instead. At the beginning of your turn, you can move one up for free. If you get it to the very top, you can flip it, and it gives you a bonus for the rest of the game. Or you can spend them, because the Shaman's going to have lots of spells. Like this one requires one wind and one ice, and then you get to roll an orange die and heal each hero you know, within range of the, the, the number of tokens that you rolled. So there's all kinds of spells you can get, and the Shaman even has units that it can summon, a flame spirit and an ice spirit that you can summon on the board that will go around and attack other players. And then there's the Rogue. The Rogue comes with their own little draw bag with tokens, and each turn they're going to pull these three tokens. Each token is gives a bonus to an action. You use one for each of your three actions. So I might say, this action, I'm, it's like I'm in the shadow when I'm attacking. And it might, let's say I want to use this one to move. It doesn't do anything. You just flip it over to show you've used it. But if I use it to attack, it gives me an extra die. And many of the rogue cards will allow you to add different types of tokens to your bag to manipulate how good the tokens are in your bag. And sometimes you can even draw extra tokens, which will give you extra actions. And then finally, and I know I haven't covered everything, but I did want to mention that you can fight against giant bosses. These are bosses, some of the scenarios have them, not every scenario has them, uh, but you might get to the end of a scenario and you'll fight against this boss, which will activate often, more often than normal monsters do, and you can see they're much tougher. This one here is 15 health per hero, and they have different uh, things that they're going to go off. So these will give you a much greater challenge than the normal monsters and regular monsters, and usually in their scenarios, killing this boss is how you win. All right, you can see here, I got stuff spread out all over the table. There are tons of miniatures in this game. I like the miniatures of this game. Simon does good miniatures. I will say that many of the miniatures are a bit spindly. Uh, the game came with plastic things to keep them all in place, but it takes up a lot of room, so I don't know what I'm going to do about them. And for the most part, I'm not having a lot of problems with the miniatures. Uh, I think the hero miniatures look really good. They have a colored base for you to put on them. There's tons of cards. There's also all kinds of upgrades you can get to, you know, there's more things you can buy for the game. And I'm going to mention the Kickstarter upgrades in a separate video. But I do like the trays. I think the trays work really well. I like the art. I think the art does nicely. It's it's easy to go in here, and I also found that the rule book was pretty easy to understand. Uh, some reference cards would have been nice, uh, but there's just so much in the game. And I think that even though for the most part, I understand how everything works, you go through it, because there's so many special abilities and different things that can happen for each character, you will run into situations where you have to say, oh, we got to look that up online or something, or just make the call there. But this is a huge amount. Everything fits in the box, and you can even get a couple extra things in the box, but you're getting a a ton of content. Alright, so that is Massive Darkness 2. 
Folks, I'm going to start out by saying I love this game. I really enjoyed it. The only thing, and this will seem minor, there's two things not a fan of. The, the miniatures, a little spindly, which means they're, they're easy. Some of them, especially one of the uh, roaming monsters, very easy to break and stuff, I found. Um, and the theme, this whole hellscape theme, I'm just, just not a theme I'm that interested in. It's okay. I prefer more traditional fantasy stuff or unusual fantasy stuff. I don't necessarily need goblins and trolls and that, but something different. It seems like uh, Simon always has the two tropes. You know, first they do normal fantasy goblins, and then they do hell. Um, I'd like to see something different. Now that there is one of the stretch goals for this, did have a fun uh, punicorns and uh, cupids and a, a big hug bear. That, that theme I thought was very funny. It's still darkish, but anyhow, those are the things I'm not a fan of. Everything else about this game, I love. I mean, I love the fact that it's not a campaign. You know, the, you can get a campaign where the people can level up to level 10 and go through multiple things. And maybe I didn't get it. So maybe if I played that, I would be blown away by it and love it. I don't know. But I love the fact that I can sit down and in two hours play a dungeon crawl, but I also get to level up. I really like that fact. Um, it's not particularly difficult to set up. I mean, getting everything in the box. So I have mine. This is the core game. It all fits very easily in the box. But if you add in all the stretch goals and it's two boxes, I put all the regular stuff in here and all the um, stuff for all the monsters in another one. And then I just stored it. So like this bag here is the Berserker and all the Berserker stuff and the miniatures and the cards and everything. So I tried to make it as easy to set up as possible. Grab the bag for your class, and I have other monsters in their different bags and things like that. So it's, I don't find it particularly difficult to set up. It's also not particularly difficult to teach people. I mean, there's some things to learn about it. It's, there's a little bit of non-intuitive for people who play a lot of dungeon crawls because when you attack monsters, you can also get hit, which is kind of a a different style of play, but once you get used to how that ebb and flow works, you realize that it just it just works into the equation better. Um, but it's not that hard to put, you know, you set up the map, you put the things out, you go. It's not kind of an exploration game, really. It's more of a just kick the door in and fight monsters. If you want a game where you just get to go around and slay mobs, this is what that this game is. So that's the second thing I like about it. It's just, it's so much fun to fight stuff. You get to roll dice. I, for once, you feel cool in this game. You feel cool in that if you're in darkness, you get that darkness die. That's awesome. Rather than, oh, I'm in here, I'm, oh, the dark, because, you know, other games, the darkness is always a negative thing. Darkness here, you're like, hee hee, we've been trained to fight in darkness, and now we're going to nail you. You have really cool special abilities. And that's going to make segue to my favorite thing about this fact that all six of these player classes and there are four more in the stretch goals I'll talk about and there's even another one I, I just learned about the druid which I'm now sad I missed um, but all six of the classes in here play differently and not that they just have a different special ability because that's even that's easy if you play paladin you can put a different character a paladin and they have different special abilities a different regular ability and a, and a ability when you roll that symbol on the dark die darkness die um but the way they play like playing the mage and manipulating around that track my my favorite two is probably oh i don't know probably the ranger i love drawing cards and trying to hit seven it gives that push your luck feel to it although Special abilities can let you manipulate that and um, get to that exact perfect arrow. Uh, I also like the rogue, pulling the tokens from the bag and matching those with your actions. And it's almost like a little bag building game. And it's neat because these are little mini games that each player is playing, but they're not complex enough that when I teach the game, I go, oh, fine, I'll teach you how to play. I can explain what you do very quickly, then you look at your cards and figure out how you're going to manipulate that. And some of them are easier than others. The Berserker and the Mage are a little easier to understand than, than maybe the... Uh, what I, there's none that I would consider to be fairly complex. Maybe... I, I, I can't think of any. There's some that I think I like more than others. Um, and, you know, like I, I think the Paladin is not as fun for me to play. They're more of a support character. 
but I can see some people really enjoying them, while the Berserker is probably one of the least interesting styles to play, I guess, from a, it's, it's, it's one of the most basic ones, but sometimes it's just fun to go up and kill monsters. So I, I think you have six different styles of play. And so this game, for me, that offers a lot of replayability because each time I can play a different class. But I've played the same class multiple times and have a good time doing it. I've either played with or seen every class in action, and it's a lot of fun. That difference in classes is just, that's a huge selling point to me on this game. The mobs and the wandering monsters, is, you know, they show up, they each have a special ability. The fact that they have loot that they drop, my word. This has a real strong Diablo feeling because you're constantly finding commons and rare treasures and epic treasures. And then the, the, all the monsters are dropping treasures and you're getting just treasure, 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 treasure. And then you got, I have too much of this common treasure. Tr turn it in for the next one. And then finding some of that set of treasure to turn you into a shadow bane version of yourself. The game just has this feel good. I'm so tired of playing... Uh, dungeon crawl games or games, I guess, where it feels like, ah, oh, we got to struggle through. And even like my favorite games, and I really like Gloomhaven. I think Gloomhaven's a lot of fun. But Gloomhaven, you kind of, you play and you play and you play. And it's very strategic and interesting. And then it's like, ooh, now you get to level up. I love leveling up. And that's another feature of this game. Every character, you have those six classes of characters character you get to pick one of three level one cards so you already have a choice at the beginning of the game that's amazingly cool and then when you level up to level two which is not that difficult this game you level up very quickly um you can you're going to level up on a second or third turn and when you level up you now have two second two uh, level two class cards and you still have the one class card you have four choices and when you get to level three you have more choices and Man, that's just exciting and interesting. And you and you and like I'll play the you know the berserker one way one time and say you know what I'm gonna try it a different way the next time, and and that just offers so much fun, and it's just a game. Massive Darkness Two is a game that lets you feel cool, to the point where these wandering monsters, which are big and they're bad, and when they show up, I'm like ooh, for two reasons. One, I'm like ooh, that guy is bad. And two, I go, ooh, let's get him. That's fun. It's fun to see a big monster come out, and then you just say, let's take him down. Now, I will say that, you know, in a lot of ways, this game is not particularly difficult until some of those level five wandering monsters are pretty, pretty blatantly bad. And of course, once you get to the bosses, the bosses are big and huge, and they're more difficult. And I'm okay with that. I like how this ramps up in difficulty, and it lets you kill lots of stuff. It lets you find lots of loot. It lets you do things. This game lets you have fun. It's like a DM who's there for your enjoyment, not one who's actively trying to win. That's what I'm looking for in a game like this. And I'm also looking for a game that we can play, complete, have stories about, all in a single play session. Couple that in with the really neat miniatures, the fun artwork. Man, this is this is one of my favorite, if not my favorite dungeon grind. That will take a while to maybe to get to my favorite. But it's definitely top tier for me. I really love playing this one. It's I'm sad that I missed out on all the extra content for it because there's just so many cool things for it. But I will be playing this one again. I've already played it a lot. I played it with my kids. I played it with the guys here in the studio. Massive Darkness 2. So much fun. Highest recommendation. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent!